Hi, this is LJ Bothell, and this is an introduction to Shoreland Community College's BizTech 102 speed keyboarding course. This is meant to be a companion to BizTech 101, in which in that course we use GDP 11, Greg Document Processing 11, for capturing our keyboarding um, homework, tests, practices, document processing, which was a fancy phrase for word processing, like letters and tables and academic reports and stuff like that. This class is meant to be speed keyboarding. So if you took the first class, BizTech 101, you should have come out with about 35 words a minute typing speed with very few errors. And this course is expecting people to start at about 30 to 35 words a minute with minimal errors. And the goal of this course is usually to get up to about 60 words a minute. I'm making it about 55 to 60 words a minute. And as we move through the quarter, various typing tests will push you to type faster and faster in order to reach an A, B, or C grade and the points that go with it. And with the final week having um, an A being the equivalent of like 68 words a minute and a C being the absolute minimum of 60 words a minute. So that's how we'll sort of work. This particular course will focus primarily on a lot of typing tests, some typing practices, a little bit of word processing so that folks could practice their speed and keystroking on actual projects like cover letters and a resume and um, a couple things like that, a few things like that. However, most of the work will be some progressive practices, a lot of typing tests of one two, three, and five minutes of speed sprints, and so on. And so the idea is over the quarter, you're just going to be typing, 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 typing. And we are going to be using a tool called the GDP11, Greg um, Document Processing. It was vetted for Shoreline Community College about a year ago. It seems to work fairly successfully. All of the keyboarding programs online have their limits and their pluses. This one is a fairly reasonably easy one to use to assess, to see your scores um, accumulating in, and um, lets you do most of your work right in the tool so that it will capture it, and so on. Now, one thing students who have taken BizTech 101 with me over the last couple quarters will see when we get into Canvas. Let's take a look at Canvas here. Canvas is the learning management tool that a lot of instructors use at Shoreline Community College, and I use it too. Students who've taken my BizTech 101 course will probably recognize a great deal of the amount of stuff in this course as being the same in terms of the tool that we use. We're using it the same way. We're ordering the same book, using the same book, um, and things like that. However, there'll be this new video and maybe an occasional new one if it's needed. But overall, um, all of the material that you see in here has been prepared for this course with some of the videos and a few of the links from the first quarter being really useful um, materials. So I put them in here as well. Now, as a student, when you come into our Canvas, you should be able to do that once you have enrolled in the class, got your student um, email address and set your password, and then logged into Canvas. And um, you could look at the Shoreline Community College website, Canvas login, to get that link for you to do that. When you log in, you'll be at BizTech 102.0401. That's our section for this quarter. Uh, it would be different for every quarter that we have this. We have um, a home page, which is this one. And this home page will essentially run as a blog where you don't get to comment, but where I will put in information over the quarter as we need. So in past quarters, I usually will put in, have put in something once a week to let you know what we've covered, observations I've made about student work, and a few tips about what we're going to be covering if there are weather-related absences like the instructors or other things that happen. Um, then I will note them in here as well. So you always want to every uh, two or three times a week, check the homepage blog and the most recent stuff will be at the top. I also have my email address right here under the picture. And for the tool we'll be using, the, the GDP 11 tool, I can help you with stuff related to the class um, what we're doing in it, but if you actually end up with a what appears to be a tech glitch of some kind, you personally will need to call them. You can call them 27 or 24 hours, seven days a week, or use their live chat. 
Now, reason for that is because the um, GDP tool, when you log into it, if you have a technical issue, say you've done a piece of work, you've hit next, and after a couple of minutes, it's not showing up um, in your student portfolio as complete, you need to call the um, GDP tech support so they can look and find out what the glitch is and then make sure it does appear. Then you can send me an email telling me what happened. However, if you try calling me with technical issues, there's nothing I personally could do to the program to help you with it or to help you understand why it may have glitched for you. I'll try to give you a few tips a little bit later on in this video, but your goal will be is if you have a technical issue of any kind with the GDP keyboarding tool, you need to call the tech support phone number, which I have right here on our homepage, or use the live chat. <coughs> Excuse me, getting over a cold. All right, so this is our homepage. Then we have modules. The modules is simply the fancy word for our information blocks and assignment blocks. So for instance, we have an information block here. One of the first things you want to do when you get into Canvas is to look through every one of these items so that you're familiar with how this class runs, um, if you have any questions about ADA-related needs, um, the recommended skills for this class, how this class is graded, a really great one on online course success tips. This gives you a link to a PowerPoint that I put together to help online learners get a chance to see what our school offers to help them support them. So you can come through here and take a look. You'll notice I like cats, but it gives you shoreline resources and other things that you need to know. So um, definitely look through all of this. This is your help me um, link. So this tells you what you can um, expect from me and from GDP 11 in the course um, computing information. How to on our different types of assignments, so you'll want to look through that so you know what to expect. And how to on um, or using GDP online, signing up for it, you basically need to self-register to use the tool and um, you need to, um, when you self-register, either give them a registration code that you will get when you purchase the text um, book um, bundle, or um, while you're waiting for the textbook bundle, you can put in a, uh, you can ask them for a 14-day temporary code. I wouldn't really recommend worrying too much about the temporary code because basically you need the textbook in order to do the typing exercises. If you don't have it and you get to various GDP 11 exercises and timed writings, which is the fancy word for typing tests or keyboarding speed tests, um, you need the book to see the text that you're going to be typing. So you want to order your book right away. And um, note that if you already took BizTech 101 with me or within the past year and you used this book and you have this bundle, you do not need to buy it again. You also should not, within the past year, need to get a new registration code from them. Yours should work. And if you need to, email me to let me know that you were a past student, and I will see if I can find you archived in there and bring you over as an active student in GDP so you don't have to try to start from scratch. However, note this important news. If for some reason you have the book, but it's over a year old or your registration doesn't work and is told, you're being told by GDP in an error message that your GDP registration is uh, uh, extinct, I guess, is, is, is gone because it's over a year old, then what you will need to do is to order a new GDP registration code. But you won't need to order the whole book. So I have a book, uh, excuse me, on our how to um, GDP 11 online and textbook, textbook ordering and usage. I have a little video that you could look at. It actually is kind of long. It also shows you how to use GDP. So you could kind of pick and choose as you watch that. Um, you should probably order it through the um, Shoreline Community College slash UW Bookstore website. Um, you can order it through McGraw-Hill. Um, do not, do not order used copies if you don't have one in a registration code already. And do not try to work without a full registration code. Don't try to get a rental copy from Amazon, etc. 
And then finally, in general, if you're getting the book bundle for the first time, do not use the GDP 11 online's um, login pages orange button for wanting to buy an online version now. The only reason to use that version is if you already have the book and you have learned that your registration code is too old and you can't use it then you will unfortunately have to pay for registration code, which I believe costs quite a bit less than the whole bundle, but you won't have to get the whole book bundle again. I hope all of that's clear so that I don't get a lot of questions by email. So anyway, that's an important tool. So the idea here is um, make sure that as you're getting familiar with Canvas, you look at every one of the information modules. There's a lot of them, but they give you all that you need to know about this class and things that will actually help you with other online and hybrid classes. Then the rest of our modules will fall into what I call the sections. They're weeks. So section one is our course introduction. You'll have a lecture resources page that will usually look like this, where I'll have a summary. You'll have some information, um, and this for week one gives you all this sort of intro information to refresh you on what you should be looking at in Canvas and getting the book, etc. One note, not only do you need to use the keyboarding tool, but for several of our document processing, i.e. word processing assignments, you will need to use Microsoft Word, preferably 2016 or 2019. So either one of those will work. If you have it for a Mac or a PC, that's fine. We have a video in Canvas that will show you how you can go in and do the document processing exercises and what's expected. But essentially what will happen is on a few things like for an academic report, a cover letter, a resume, in those particular assignments, you will be asked to download a file from the keyboarding application, open it on your computer, do whatever the work that the textbook asks you to do on your computer in Word, save the document under the same name you downloaded it from, and when you're finished, upload it back to the lesson in GDP, and then um, submit it. And then GDP will be able to assess your keystroking, which is what I'll be looking for in the assignment, as well as your accuracy at following the instructions for making it look like a letter, a report, etc. So you'll want to have Word for that. If you don't have Microsoft Word or Microsoft Office at home, say you're a new student, then the neat thing is that at Shoreline Community College, you actually can get this free. As a student, you can get Microsoft Office 365 free, so you can go to the Shoreline Community College website and then type in here, free Microsoft Office, and it will give you a link that will take you to this page. And then with this, you'll be able to, <coughs> excuse me, you will be able to download Microsoft Office for up to five devices at home, like your computer, a uh, tablet, even your phone, if you really wanted it on your phone. And that way you'll have a current copy of Microsoft Office. Another thing to know about Microsoft products and Shoreline Community College, the way it works is that when you sign up as a student for the free Office 365, and then you download whatever the, the, the um, Office suite is for your Mac or PC, it's usually because it's considered a subscription service, Microsoft now has all its Microsoft programs updated on a regular basis. So as they make changes, as they change how things look, um, how they if they add tools in there, if they deprecate a few things that they don't think are useful for cloud computing anymore, all of these will change in your programs as you have them. So those are good things to know, but what it also does mean is that right now, the current version of Microsoft Office is 2019 as of January of this year. And if you've got Office 2016 at home, that's fine. But what will happen is that when you use the um, free student version of Office 365 Pro Plus, when you get the download and um, install it in your computer, it will be the equivalent to Office 2019. So that will be basically continuing to roll out over the year. Right now, GDP 11, the keyboarding application, doesn't care if you're using Office 2016 or 2019, but I did want to clarify that for you.
So anyway, let's see. Let's take a look here. Your modules, as I've indicated in here, will be your information module. I'm going to collapse that. And then we have 10 weeks um, or 10 modules. One thing I tend to do with my classes is to make sure that our first due date isn't for about two full weeks after school starts. That way, if we have students who enroll a little bit late, students who are waiting for financial aid, students who might be coming in on a senior waiver or some other thing that doesn't allow them to enroll until a full week into the quarter, that they're not missing deadlines right away. So you'll want to keep an eye on that. The other thing I tend to do is that I combine our final assignment which would be our final instructional week and the days that are officially set aside by the college for final exams so that you usually will have 11 or 12 days to do your final assignments in a class. I try to think ahead because I've been a student myself several times and I know how hard it is to to navigate working part-time or full-time, managing your family commitments, managing more than one class, trying to juggle all of these schedules. So one thing you will notice that in here um, is you will have in the modules, you will be able to see the deadline, how many points something is worth. And then when you come in and you want to see what an assignment looks like, we're going to have, for instance, keyboarding enrichments. Unfortunately, it's locked right now. Sorry. It's, class doesn't start actually officially for a few days. But what you'll have in here are a series of things like, uh, for BizTech 102, practices and timed work. Enrichments will be practices. Timed writings, these will be one-minute timed writings. There's a whole bunch of them. The idea with the timed writings in GDP is you don't, you're not stuck taking them just once. So say you're working on timed writing, oh, let's see, 1J, and you do it and you get a C on it, and you think, you know, I could do better. You could actually take it again, and you, if you do it two or three times, the timed writing, basically I think it's the top two average scores, um, assessments of your keyboarding um, speed will be averaged out, and then the grade will be made. Now, that doesn't mean you want to do every single one of these lessons two or three times, but you can, especially if you're a student who's starting in here at lower than 30 words a minute and you really need to start you know, building your speed up. So we'll be having keyboarding enrichments for a couple of weeks and timed writings. The, the, they'll move to two-minute timed writings. We'll have some speed sprints. You'll have document processing, which is where you'll go in and do a few documents like reports and such. Then you'll move up to three-minute timed writings or you know, typing tests. We'll have more speed sprints coming up. Um, and then at some point, we'll move down to some paced typings. They're timed, but the idea is to just keep giving you different text to keep working on, building your speed. And then you'll be moving to some five-minute timed writings. Um, there's not that many of them. So every week, you're going to need to probably dedicate at least two or three hours to this. And you can also play and do other things with your typing on your own that helps you build your speed overall. And, you know, so this is this is how our, our modules work out. OK, discussions. We really don't have many of these. We have an introduction that you'll get points for. And then if you come up with some tips, I have a student tips discussion area where you could put that in there. Um, maybe you've learned something about GDP like, hey, I discovered with the speed sprint that I need to, one, get in there, do it really quickly, and then hit next within about 30 seconds after I finished, or else GDP may not recognize that I completed it, or it might tell me it's timed out. So I'm going to put that tip in there so other students know about it. That's what the idea of these student tips are. So you can come up with those. And then the grade section, which is where you'll be able to see your points. Now, another word about BizTech 102. Like BizTech 101, the tool we're using is actually called the GDP tool. I told you that. And in it, when you get graded, you will see letter grades, A, B, C, or F. It's the way this particular tool works. At the end of a grading, uh, excuse me, of an assignment period, after the due date, I will go in and I will convert the A, B, C, or F into points that will go into Canvas. Then in Canvas, you'll be able to see in your grades your points accumulating. So in here, 
what you will as a student, once you have signed up and self-registered in GDP, you're going to see um, a, a student interface here. And your student interface will show lessons, which is where you should be when you're looking for the work I assign you in Canvas. Skill building will give you some things that you, uh, you'll be able to see some of the things we're assigned to do. Map Plus, I'm not actually doing this in this class, but you can go ahead and use this. So you can do this, whatever this pretest is. I'm not going to do it. Um, timed writings, this will show you just what the timed writings are. These are all in your lessons, actually. Um, but if you realize that you want to work on a timed writing and you want to find, oh, yeah, I still need to do this one, then you could come right over to timed writings. Same with skill building. But don't just rely on these two. Make sure that you're always checking your lessons. And here's how this looks. We'll be doing some stuff from part one, part two, and part three in the book. That's lessons one through 60 overall. The way GDP works is in a part, it breaks things by units. So even though we will not do all parts of lesson one through five, this is what they consider a section of the book, and that's how it's listed here. See this little yellow circle with a black triangle? This indicates that this work has not yet been done. So I've started it, but it's not completed. When the whole unit worth of assignments that I assigned you in here is complete, then it will turn into a green check mark like that. So for instance, I've done the lesson one home row keys simply because I've looked at that, which is this, and then hit next. The next thing would be the lesson one enrichment. And this will tell you a summary of what you're going to do. Then you would hit next. And then you'll come here and you will need the textbook in order to type the paragraph for this. <coughs> and then when you are finished typing whatever the enrichment or whatever the, the, the paragraph typing is, then you'll hit next and so on. So um, lesson two, you'll have a one minute timed typing. This is how, oops, that's not available, so hang on here. Uh, I was looking for, oh, I've got to open up lesson one. That's one of the things here because I had a green check mark. I forgot to. You need to open up the lesson to see the pieces and parts. So here's what happens. Lesson one was complete because I went in and did the timed writing. But say I want to do it again. Then I could click it. And again, I will need the textbook in order to do this. Notice also in GDP on the screen here to the left by our navigation, you'll see the core instructions of what you'll be asked to do over here. So this is indicating that you're in a current attempt. The goal of this particular one is 10 words a minute. Um, this actually is not necessarily accurate. This here, I hate to say, is built into the tool. I, however, have gone in to all of our timed writings and I've reset the actual word count per minute and error ratio that you're allowed to meet the needs of this course. So while the goal in the book, if you were starting this as a brand new student would be 10 words a minute, you can actually ignore the goal up here because our goal will actually be about 30 words a minute on this one. But you're on a current attempt. This doesn't matter. Instructions. You do not actually have to take two of them. You can if you want to to get a higher average, but you really just need to do one. When you finish it, then hit next and then make sure it shows up in your student portfolio. And then um, if there's a printing error or something you need to know about, you'll get a note there. <coughs> so that's an example of what a timed writing looks like. Let's see something else that we want to take a look at. Lesson 25B. I've only opened a few of them up extra um, early so that I can show you what they look like. So here's lesson 25, and here's lesson 25B, which is a 12-second speed sprint. This is something where you'll come in here, you'll need to type this really fast, and then when you've done it, you'll need to hit next so that it doesn't time out. I'm not going to stay here long enough to time it out. The third thing we want to look at is 26F. This is less than 26, so it looks like I've already started at some point. And then here, this would be a less than 26 um, um, F, or otherwise known as correspondence 26-3, and that will show up in Canvas. And what you'll do is you'll go in here, 
And this is an example of where I told you that you will need to start from scratch by downloading a file. You'll work on the file from the download name in your um, Word document um, on your, your installed copy of Word on your computer. When you're finished with it, you'll save it and then you'll upload the file. And then once you upload this file, this will stop being grayed out and you'll be able to submit your work. So basically, those are the kinds of things we'll be doing in here. Let's see, I believe we also have a lovely skill building area. Mm -mm. Um, we've got some lessons here. We've got test three. Skill building, you'll want to come over here because one of the interesting things I've noticed over here is that the skill building that I have assigned for paced practice and progressive practice do not show up in lessons. I will remind you of that as we get closer to that in our actual assignments. Um, but here, this is an example of a paced practice where you'll come in, you'll read that. This assignment isn't available, but it will tell you what you need to do. And then back to skill building, same thing with progressive practice. You'll have a couple of those and you'll get instructions of what to do. So overall, I think this probably gives you a good view of what you're looking at in, in this. Um, in your lessons, this is where you'll be able to see again whether you've started a lesson, whether you've completed it. Remember that every time you have a lesson, you'll want to click on it to open up whatever it is I assigned in there. Same with the enrichment. The enrichment here was a paragraph typing. My GDP over here is essentially where you will be able to see the different things that are assigned and what your scores are, your, your grades. <coughs> so often in here, once you've taken it, some of the goals may not be accurate because I changed them and the GDP tool is not quite as intuitive as to put my goals in, but you'll see your A, B, C, and F in here. There won't be any of those. There'll be lots of A's and B's. This is a Word manual and reference manual, uh, Word 2006 reference manual, if you would like it. You could also play along with um, anything that is not um, turned off. Anyway, I hope this gives you a good overview of what you're looking for. One thing I should tell you, even though we don't have any assignments that we can look at just yet, this class only has uh, about was it 200 or in 50 or 300 points in the class? The way it works is that for things like the keyboarding enrichments, this is what they will be called a completion oriented exercise. Either you complete it or you don't. So it will be worth two points or zero points with a one point um, available if there was a technical issue that you could verify with me so you at least get a point for trying it. There shouldn't be any technical issues, but I put that in place. Things like the timed writings, you'll be scored on your words per minute. So there'll be an A, B, C, or F grade. So an A will be equal three points, B will equal two points, C will equal one point, and then anything below a C will equal zero points. And then, um, so the, 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 the um, information on the assignments will show you all of that when this opens up. Um, in Canvas, if you haven't used it before, you can go into your account, to put a picture in if you'd like, to put a bio in, to put notification preferences and so on. You can also check with our e-learning department to find out more about that. So I think that I've covered the basics of what you need to know for getting into BizTech 102. Just remember the goal of this class is to develop up to about 55 to 60 words a minute accurate speed typing. It's best to do as much by touch as possible, but I'm not going to be there watching. So if you're a person who has a different way of doing it, I, I, I can't worry about that. But And I also know that occasionally we'll get a student that may have some differences in their abilities for typing. Sometimes a person might be missing a finger or have something where they um, really need to see the, screen, uh, the keys when they're typing for whatever reason. Um, I do want to note that this is a class where there isn't much wiggle room in terms of the objectives of the course. So if we have a student who has concerns about being able to go into speed typing with visual issues, you would want to talk to our ADA department at the school to find out what accommodations can help you reach the maximum you can in this class and support you in that. So anyway, I hope that's enough issue.
uh, information, excuse me, I hope that's enough information for you. Definitely feel free to email me when you have questions, but just make sure that when you first get into Canvas, you look through our full information section, and then each week before you start working on the assignments as I list them in Canvas to do in the GDP tool, make sure to look at the lecture slash resource links page first because I'll give you tips about things that you need to know in there, what we're focusing on, concerns of what I'm seeing. And then again, every day or two, make sure to check your um, home page so you can see any comments I put about the class in it. So I'm looking forward to working with you. Thank you very much and have a great quarter.